Hello, this is Nancy and welcome to my channel today. For the last couple of years I've been using the chain stitch on my cover stitch machine for uh, putting together my muslins. You may call it a toile or practice garment. The reason being is because it's really fast to, to sew, uh, faster than the sewing machine, and even faster to remove the stitches, whether you want to remove the whole seam or just a partial seam. For the chain stitch, you only need one needle and your looper. And I, I have a two needle machine, you may have three, but whatever, I prefer to use the right needle because it gives me more room on the bed to put a tape there for a guide, a seam guide. I've already removed the left needle and suggest on any machine, whenever you take a needle in or out, you put a piece of fabric underneath the presser foot so that you don't drop the needle down into the machine. Let's start by threading for a chain stitch. To begin threading, pull the antenna all the way up. There uh, is a slot and a hole that coordinates to each thread stand. I only use this um, slot just from back to front, just put it in there, and it just slides in. I've never used the holes. And then there's a big long thread guide here and two holes for each thread. Start at the left hole from back to front, pull the thread through, go around the back and back to front through the right hole. And same with the needle thread. Put it through the slot back to front back to front through the left hole, back to front through the right hole. And then go through your tension disc. You'll have um, need to have your presser foot up to release the tensions and make sure it's seated in there well on both of them. Once your looper thread is through the tension disc, lay it into the uh, slot here. There's a little guide at the bottom. And then turn your hand wheel towards you until these three holes line up. Then from right to left, pass the thread through all three. Pull on the knob to release your looper. Dropped it. <laughs> There's a hole at the end. and a hole at the tip. Pull it to the back, push your looper in, and you're set for that. Looper is done. For the upper thread, uh, again the tension disc, through three hooks over the top of the bar, from right to left on that bar. And then I'm going to show a close-up of this next step. The last place that you need to put a, your needle threads is uh, this area right here. And you need to make sure you get the thread in between the, these two pieces of metal. It's all kind of loose feeling and there's a spring in it. So that's important. You need to get it right in between. And it is, and that just gives it a little extra tension, I think. Uh, the la then down through this, and then you just thread your needle front to back as you would with any machine. The muslin I'm making is for pants, and I'm using a cotton woven fabric. So I have my, my cover stitch machine set on factory settings, except for the stitch length I have at the longest on four. You don't have to put it on the longest, I just do because I consider it a basting stitch and it just goes a little faster, I think. Might be in my mind, I'm not sure. <laughs> but um, I need to put, I'm going to put a piece of tape for a seam guide. My pattern is 5 8 inch seam allowances. So I made this notion some time ago, I use it quite a bit. It's just a piece of muslin folded over with a layer of interfacing in it. And then with a ruler and an air erasable pen, I drew the lines uh, for one inch, three quarter inch, five eighths, a half, three eighths, and a quarter. 
all in each one in a different color and then uh, I tested them all with my gauge and on the machines and works pretty well so for 5 8 inch we're gonna go with the blue line so I just um, put the blue line right under my needle and put it straight down in there and then put the tape against the edge of the fabric so that was pretty fast and easy. We're going to start our chain stitch now. I'm going to be sewing a one front to one back at the inner leg. I like to start by putting the needle down into the fabric and making sure that the tail is pulled behind. And um, then we just go. At the edge of the fabric right beside right next to my tape here. We're down to the end of the seam now and that's where I want to show you something. Okay, first let's look at the chain stitch. <clears throat> the top side is just regular stitching and then the, the back side has the chain which is thicker. When you get to the end, um, if, if you don't remember where you started and where you ended, and that does get confusing after you have all these different seams sewn, I generally try to sew from the top to the bottom, but when you're doing the waistband and the crotch seam and things like that, it's so easy to forget. And when the stitches are being removed, you can only it will only work if you start at the end of the seam. So I'm going to make a little dot right here with a marker. On each, sew, on each seam I sew, and that's going to help me later. And so we'll go ahead and take this out with the presser foot, and I'm still using my dental tool from years ago. Still hasn't broken, I'm surprised. And remove the work. I'm going to go ahead and sew up the rest of it, and then I'll be back to show you how to remove it for an entire seam and for a partial seam. Now my pants are all sewn together with the chain stitch, except for the waistband, because I want to do all the alterations that need to be done before, before putting the waistband on. But let's say that these are too tight in the leg, and I want to um, make a smaller seam allowance. I would go ahead and sew in the, the seam allowance first, before taking out the old one. That way you don't have to pin <laughs> pin, them all, pin it all up again. It'll just stay in place. Um, but, let's say you did that, and then what to, to remove the stitches, start with where you ended, and there's my blue dot. Then I leave the first stitch in, because if I try popping that, more, more than likely it's just going to pull out. And each time a, a stitch slips out, it's just going to... Um, lock again. So let's just start up here and pop the stitch. Make sure it breaks. Skip a stitch and then do another. Then turn it over to the chain side and just loosen it and pull. And it just comes right out. And this is so much faster then on a regular sewing machine basting stitch where you're unpicking every couple of inches and then pulling out threads. Turn it over and then the stitch side comes out just as easily. Very fast. If you've used your cover stitch machine with all, all of the needles in it, uh, the same thing. You'll skip the first stitch and pop the second one and then do the same thing just adjacent from it on all your other threads. Skip a stitch, break, and then directly across, break, turn it over, loosen the stitch, and pull. In this scenario, I'm going to show you how, if you want to just take a, out a partial seam, how it's done. 
or how I do it <laughs> anyway. Uh, let's say that the hip is good and the knee down is good and I just want to work on this area. It could be a sleeve or anything else. So I've made a mark at the top and bottom of the area I'm, I want to work on. Um, I stopped the seam that way. <laughs> so above uh, my pin, I'm going to clip these stitches here as we did before. And then in below this pin as well. Turn it over and well, this time you do have to use scissors to clip that. Well, my my um, <clears throat> seam ripper is dull. And then take it out. Okay, the reason for the pins is this. You're going to be trying on these pants <clears throat> or shirt or whatever. And if you tug like that, it's going to go about an inch. And it did. It stopped right, just right below my mark. That's good enough. And then the same on the other side. If I open it up and tug on the stitches, it goes about an inch like that before it will lock again. But I do suggest you don't get too wild when <laughs> you're trying on your muslins because it could go further up. But that's pretty good and, and just as good as if you used a basting stitch on your sewing machine. So that's how you do a partial seam. For the last example, I made a mock-up of intersecting seams. This would be like a crotch seam or underarm seam, for instance. And the last seam I sewed is this one on top. So this is going to have to be done first. <clears throat> so I find this stitch side here, not the chain side, but the stitch side, and I'm going to make my marks. I'll just say from here to here. And then I'll put my pins approximately an inch away from my marks. And pop the stitches as before. Really should get a new seam ripper. <laughs> I, there. <laughs> Both ends. And my mark that I made is down here. I put, a, I put two marks because that was the second one I sewed. So now I know that I have to start with this seam. And then we'll take out our chain. Turn it over, take all the thread out here. And take the pins out. I'll go ahead and give it a little tug. Don't want to pull too hard, of course. So there you go with one. One seam is opened and then you just do the same thing to the other seam. And that will just open up the one area for your underarm seam or crotch seam. I hope you found some ways today to use the chain stitch on your cover stitch machine and that you give it a try for your practice garments. Thank you for stopping by and happy sewing. <laughs>